Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today on Lost Film File, I'm going to talk about The Patriot from 1928. Now, The Patriot is infamous as being the only Best Picture nominee to be lost. It was a Best Picture nominee in the 1928-1929 Oscar year, because they used to do that slash year thing in the early years, and it actually won one Oscar for Best Achievement in Writing, which, as it is based on a book and a play, actually, would actually be nominated for Best Adapted Screenplay later, but at the time they just called it Best Writing Achievement, and was nominated also for Best Art Direction, Best Director for Ernest Lubitsch, and Best Actor for Amel Jannings. This was a major movie at the time, and was actually the last silent film nominated for Best Picture within the silent era. Despite having sound effects, apparently, and may or may not having dialogue, it was still the last silent film of the silent era until so the artist would be nominated in 2011 if you count that but i don't because it's the artist it was actually widely praised critically at the time it was very beloved it was considered like an all-time great it made the new york times top 10 films of 1928 it actually was a pretty big movie it cost about a million dollars it was shot for over 68 days and was a huge epic it even had costumes imported from berlin and everything like that and now what was the patriot about well, it is about a czar in uh, Russia, Tsar Paul, which is was a czar. It doesn't sound like a czar, but was a czar. Tsar Paul I, played by Amal Jannings, and was kind of the mad czar. And his friend, Count Palin, played by Louis Stone, was a loyal friend to him, but then realized that his friend had gone too mad, and it was in Russia's best interest to shoot him and he even says in it or there's a title card that says that but i don't know for real because you know it's a lost movie said i have been a bad friend and lover but i have been a patriot which is which is quite a line to go out on. Ernest Lubitsch is uh, kind of a major director in Hollywood history. This was actually his uh, second Best Director nomination. He was previously uh, nominated for The Love Parade and would never win Best Director or an Oscar, unfortunately. Was probably best known, to me at least, for Heaven Can Wait, which he was also nominated for Best Director for. Supposedly, it, the sets were amazingly beautiful, according to uh, Frank Thompson's book about lost films. The sets had beautiful, eccentric, angles and dramatic lighting like German expressionism with the scale of craftsmanship of Hollywood films of the era which makes the set sound amazing probably why it was nominated for best art direction and everything I can see from the little footage we do have which is just a trailer is the only footage available to the public unfortunately since this film apparently was completely lost about 20 years after it had been released there were no known copies to be found and it stayed that way for a long time for about 25 Hundred feet of the film has been discovered in the UCLA archive and one reel of it was recovered in Portugal. I'm a little iffy if that reel is with UCLA or is in a separate location or th those match up but regardless we do not have an entire print of The Patriot and apparently UCLA doesn't really ever screen it so or digitize it or show it to anyone the only thing we really have is a trailer that is publicly available on youtube and that looks pretty good actually when i watched the trailer i was like i would i would watch this silent film it actually looks really good mel jannings uh if you didn't know was probably best known for most people now for uh the films he did with murnau with both faust and the last laugh playing the bellhop in uh, the Last Laugh, which is a great performance. He's actually the first actor to win Best Actor for another lost film, which is completely lost the way of the flesh. He actually, interesting little side note I learned in my research, even though he did technically win Best Actor, uh, the first Best Actor ever, and he's the only German actor to ever do that, he was not actually the winner in terms of votes. He was the runner-up. The actual winner in terms of votes was Rin Tin Tin, who's a dog, if you didn't know, who was the big box office draw at the time. But apparently, because the Oscars were mainly created for people to take uh, film and filmmaking more seriously, they thought they wouldn't be taken very seriously if they give Best Actor to Rin Tin Tin, so they gave it to the runner-up, which was Amal Jannings. I don't think he ever knew that. That was discovered. I'm assuming after he died, he eventually uh, would leave Hollywood because he had a very thick German accent, which actually came into play when they were making this film. As the uh, sound era was kind of just starting, since it was the last film, silent film, it seems most of these films nominated for Best Picture against it did have sound. It was selling more of its sound effects in the trailer. It only says something about Amal Jannings like, 
screaming or him yelling basically but it doesn't say anything about dialogue but apparently they were aware he had a thick german accent and are actually going to have another actor dub him but he was very upset about this and then he had to re-record his own voice onto it but that would pretty much be the end of his career in hollywood when sound film came in and he went back to germany even starring in films with marlena dietrich and eventually uh working on nazi propaganda and uh was apparently a nazi and even when nazi germany fell was trying to get back with the americans by holding his best actor oscar and kind of showing them that he was really a part of them but that didn't apparently help that much uh marlena dietrich distanced herself from him saying he was always a ham he was a very good actor in those silent films uh, despite making propaganda for one of the worst things ever to happen in human history but this sort of connects to marlena dietrich because she was in the joseph von sternberg film the scarlet empress in 1934 and joseph von sternberg actually lifted crowd scenes which is probably the most outside of the trailer of the, the patriot you'd ever see into his movie and then he actually showed the film his film the scarlet empress to Ernest Lubitsch, who actually directed The Patriot, saw the crowd scenes that were taken from The Patriot and put in his own movie and said they were willful waste and disregard of costs because 1934 was during the Great Depression, to which uh, Joseph von Sternberg was like, that's your movie. <laughs> that's your movie. I took clips from your movie and put it in here. Lubitsch did not recognize it, unfortunately. The Patriot is really the only lost Best Picture nominee, clearly, as I mentioned, how Amel Channing's Best Actor win. That film is completely lost. There are other Oscar nominees that are lost. This is probably the most major Oscar-nominated films to ever be lost, as it is the only Best Picture nominee ever to be lost. And to be lost within 20 years, before the 50s, this film was nowhere to be found, which means there might actually not really be anyone who's ever seen it alive today, which is pretty remarkable. There might be a few people, but I doubt maybe they even remember it. I, if Hey, if someone who's older is watching this, and please let me know in the comments if you actually have other than the trailer, or if you've seen The Scarlet Empress. The Patriot sounds very fascinating. You know, it sounds very much like a silent historical melodrama but it sounds like a really good one and from the footage that we can see in the trailer that's very boastful as most classic hollywood trailers were and if you spent a million dollars you'd be boastful too i guess but it sounds like a cool movie and it is an interesting and odd footnote in film history as being the only best picture ever lost as the academy of motion picture arts and sciences likes to take care of their own and mostly try to restore and take care of the best picture nominees unfortunately one slipped through the cracks and i guess that will be the patriots major distinction instead of actually being a film that any of us could enjoy and i hope one day that the full film is found so that we can fully understand why and how this film was so beloved and sort of be able to see a part of film history and academy history as being one of the best pictures of 1928 1929 so if you would like to talk about the patriot from 1928 then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to. And I'd like to especially thank uh, Matt Berry, who helped me uh, do research for this video. I know we used Frank Thompson's book, Lost Films, Important Movies That Disappeared, which I will have an Amazon link for below if you'd like to purchase that book. And as well as I used uh, information from uh, the critically acclaimed uh, Patreon exclusive podcast, Only the Best, where they see every Best Picture nominee in a given year. And they went over this film and told me that some of that information about uh, the Patriot. So I'd like to thank uh, all those people, uh, but especially Matt Berry, and all of their links are below in the description. Thank you very much for watching. Also, there was uh, in 1938, there was another version of the Patriot made. It is not really a remake. Some people call it that. I wouldn't call it that because uh, the silent film is both based on a play and a book and the, a French film, The Patriot, uh, which is based on the book but not the play so it's sort of just another adaptation and I wouldn't really count that as a remake and it's not really a remake it's just a different adaptation of one of the source materials of the Patriot. Mm -hmm.